have to say it just went way beyond my expectation. It's like nothing that we had in D4. Pure hatred, they're Mephisto's army. They wanted them to feel a little bit more different from your typical demon family. Everyone's quality was top notch. But at the time, we didn't know if it was gonna work. I think what we landed is, is going to turn some heads. This is not your normal thing. It's, it's the living form of hatred. The new monster class that we get to introduce, they're called Hollows. These Hollows have actually been around for like millennia. Mephisto at some point did go to Nahantu a long, long, long time ago. And these Hollows were a reaction of Mephisto being in Nahantu at the time. And then they went dormant. Bringing Mephisto in the Soul Stone um, seems like the right thing to do for Nero but it has a chain reaction that I don't think anybody was prepared for. The hollows are really rife throughout the Hantu now that Mephisto is back and just visually like horribly disgusting and sort of made up of the things that have been consumed by the hollows. Yeah, they're an extension of evil infecting wildlife and other monsters and people with this thing called ichor and they're just sort of going mad. When we're designing the hollows, the, the main thing that we wanted to push was just if, if hatred came to life, what would it look like? So we're thinking this black goo that's kind of like formless, but also have this red anger energy inside of it. And then with concept, we just want to make, you know, cool monsters. What if it's three legs? What if it's no legs? What if it has like three arms? So we pushed a lot of like options and exploration. And then from then on, like everyone from narrative to design and concept would talk about it. It's like, okay, we like this one and then we can push it and, and move it further. The Hollow family is made up of four members. The Swarmer, the Spitter, the Caster, and the Brutes. A big thing for me was that the family need to be overwhelming without just relying on pure numbers. So they're gonna get stronger over time if you let them fester their, their, their hatred after all. The swarmer can teleport and attack you from behind, from the sides. The spitter is a slug with legs. They spew out this vomit stream of goo. The brute is the big hulking slow guy of the family. He has the shield that's buffing and making the rest of the army stronger. Caster is responsible for creating new swarmers. They also will channel onto a specific hollow and do them with extra hatred, makes them stronger and more deadly. The hollow casters will serve as an elegant, hovering, yet menacing dungeon character in the game, really informed many of our design ideas. When we want to make a new variant, we want to know in which specific area we would going to see that character or creature. Readability is like the main focus. Went through several iterations on the design, the texture, the materials, and the camera testing. The day after she gave me like, I don't know, what was it, like <laughs> 10 different variations? I was okay, uh, now I, we are I, talking. I, the emission on the spikes really like did an awesome job. Uh, to both on the, the silhouette and also to improve the readability. And in the end, we have the version that we were both happy with. And yeah, hand it over to the tech artist. We had some really strong narrative direction in understanding how big of a role hatred played. And we knew that we needed one look to tie it all together. This hatred has one source and it's all, it's all about Mephisto. For the hollow specifically, we identified that we wanted to do some special work with the materials, with the shaders for those characters. Shaders are the code that runs on the GPU that takes in all sorts of inputs like textures and lighting and position and outputs what the object's surface is supposed to look like. We wanted a shader that was capable of adding this sludge layer, this hatred layer over top of it and making it dynamic and animating so that it really looks like it was constantly undulating or writhing. So once we had this shader function, 
we were able to kind of apply that in all these different contexts, like the monsters, like the environment, the character armors even. Most of the shader work was done by Alex, who really took that shader function and made it work in all sorts of different contexts. And we also have the hatred add-ons to these characters, these tentacles, these writhing hatred growths all over them, which was a procedurally generated process that was largely run by Sky on our team. The Hollows boss was kind of born of this idea of what does a pinnacle Hollows really look like? We have the Hollows family, um, and that was pretty well defined by the time that the Hollows boss kind of came up for concepting. Our artist, Victor, had a, had a lot of cool ideas for like, horror themes and really wanting to push visuals with contortions and like breaking the neck of this monster all over the place. That's where we had the option to go, like, can we push it and really get that idea of what hatred and the hollows are all about. This inky black ichor that latched on to a once powerful spellcaster. It was such a great source of power that this particular hollows monster turned into the priestess of hatred. Um, I'm Victor Lee, a principal concept artist on the uh, Diablo team, and I concepted the Priestess of Hatred. Victor Lee is, is one of the OGs from Diablo, and he's known for creating a lot of dark imagery. And every time we want to have a monster or boss, he's, he's done all the greats, even Diablo himself. One of his monitors on, on the side of his desk is just like a dark black eye staring at him. And so when, when we needed something that's pure darkness, like we had to tap Vic. I feel like when we're talking about hatred, I kind of imagine, visualize it as like a black webby like thing. So I thought a spider configuration would work for this. So I did a few variations, some with um, souls, human souls trapped in the abdomen. It's like a purgatory because this creature consumes humans. I have this nagging feeling for a long time that why I felt it's not working, no matter how interesting the design is, I'm not pushing the boundaries. So I basically rethought the whole thing. A lot of our creatures are just like raw aggression. It's just muscly and, and just brutal. Maybe this one is more insidious. What if the human figure is not controlling the hatred, but it's the other way around? Like the hatred is actually mocking humanity. It's like dragging a puppet around. So what I did is I kept the human figure as a focal point, but the rest of the creature is this moving mass of basically a ball of hatred. It broke a lot of rules, but I felt I just felt like this just fits. Um, so I went ahead with it and rendered it out. I was looking at the concept for the first time with the designer on the feature, Charles, and we were kind of in this stunned silence for a little bit because it was this reaction of, this thing is so cool. And then we started thinking, how are we even going to make this thing move? Typically, our monsters are bipedal or they're quadrupeds. How's it gonna move? We can't rely on walk cycles anymore. How's it gonna rotate? We can't rely on you know the built-in rotation stuff without it looking weird as hell. It was clear that in order to make this like animate and look natural, we were gonna have to pretty much dive into uncharted territory. We wanted it to move in a very unique way. We wanted it to somersault through the air and be super unpredictable and zippy and just have like ridiculous animations as those tentacles are flying all over the place. We had that narrative and kind of drive to make it formless and with our conventional rigging that we can do that. We were doing prototyping before the feature even kicked off. Like we were already meeting with animation and tech art to say, hey, we have this thing. We think it's really cool, but we need help figuring this out. 
So we had a lot of early collaboration, which was really what set us up for success. When the animator came back with it, going from post to post rather than your normal animations, I was like, yes, that's it. That's what hatred should feel like. When you first find the Priestess of Hatred, it's going to look like a lifeless human corpse. And you're like, this is, doesn't look like a boss fight. I'm in a boss arena, what's going on? But as you approach, you see that the body gets pulled into a giant pool of hatred. And then out of that pool of hatred comes this giant mass of tentacles. And that is the boss. So after animation, it gets to come to me. And I get to do all of the really cool visual effects at the end show what those tentacles are doing when they impact the ground, when they slap something, when they hit the player. It really brings the entire thing together. The vomit attack is really gross because there's like this uh, part of the torso of the humanoid that has been kind of hollowed out and now has teeth. The tentacles come out from the mass and they grab the, the humanoid and kind of pull the body back so that the slit in the belly opens up and all of the hatred just pours out in a straight beam. It's, it's pretty gross. The hollows are just such a unique family. From the moment they spawn in on your screen, you can tell that they are different. They have just such unique behaviors and animations we were able to execute on a vision that's really just so different than what we typically do. The whole process made me feel very proud of uh, our whole team. Everyone just got it. They understood what the monster was, they got the vision, and it just worked. The eye on the screen has many functions. It keeps me in the right frame of mind. Um, what we are doing is dark. It should be horrifying. I should feel the fear while I'm doing it. Um, it's a reminder of that. The eye also serves as uh, a warning. Like, get moving. Don't dwell too long and, and wander around, you know. Get this thing moving. Get the work done.